What's up everybody, it's Dick from Traders Reborn. Quick disclaimer, this video is for educational purposes only. Nothing is financial advice. I'm not a licensed financial advisor. Decisions based on this information are at your own risk. I am not liable for any losses. Thank you for understanding. Okay guys, we're gonna start off here with this mini course of how to identify confluence levels, okay? A lot of you guys have been asking me how I get these levels, how how are they so accurate, how do I know how, to, how it's gonna balance, how it's gonna reject the bottom of it, the low of it, or the high of the day, right? So first off, always start off by choosing these levels and drawing them on the higher time frames. Okay, so what happened was a lot of the, um, the previous month here, um, you know, the way price was moving, where price was in a range, there was no levels uh, above the certain range that we were in. Let me bring you to the four hours here. So for a while, I believe we were trading in, I believe it was, what was it, April. So we were in about right around here. This was the range we were trading in for a while, I believe. Okay, so we were stuck in this range for a good amount of time right here. Right. So what was that? Wow, let me do that system. Okay. So we were in this range for a while, right? And we didn't have any levels above this because take a look on the previous you know there was no levels anywhere right if we were right here we were trading this was the only level where it stopped at right but there's no levels above this so how would we know where price was going to go where was price going to react right once it passed these levels there was no levels we were pretty much like this this was our, our price was right if it breaks here these highs how do we know where price would go right there's nothing over here there's nothing until you over here, right? So, in order to find where price was going to re reject, you're going to have to find confluence levels from way back uh, in 2022, 2021. So, what price confluence levels, um, what they are, are, is pretty much just point of interest. So, if you go back to about right here, around March, February, right? The easiest way to find confluence levels is pretty much they're just um, support and resistance levels but this is where the point of interest of price where buyers and sellers are at that's the level where buyers and sellers are present so if you were to draw a line here this is considered a resistance right and now what you want to do to find confluence level is you see i marked one right here right from earlier and this is basically a confluence level right here if you look at it this is how you identify confluence level right here, okay? Look, we, support was right here, right? And then here's another support. Now, when price came back up through it, when, oh when price came back up through it, right? When it came back down, look where that support is at again, right? Now price comes back down here. Basically, it's like a point of control, okay? If you guys know how to use point of control on the volume profile, Whenever price is below that confluence level, you trade the short. Whenever it's above that confluence level, you trade the longs. So however price is reacting there, that's where you decide what direction it's going. Who's that uh, with the sounds? Oh, no. Moto fucker. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta uh, mute. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so, so pretty much it's, it's the way you trade point of control. That's exactly how you use confluence level. And this is how you identify it. You see how every time it comes to that level, it reacts, right? And then, and look, if we pull it to the side, take a look, another reaction right here. You see? Now, once it bounces upwards and it comes back down, you're expecting it to bounce upwards again. But because it did it, now it's below it, you trade the shorts. You see? And then let's move to the, look, you see how the same level is constantly being reacted, right? There's this constant reaction every time it touches this level. Look, here it is again. Let's go forward. You see? Here it is again. Kind of a little reaction right there. Right? But once it goes past it, you're now looking for more upside. And then let's see. So here we are in the current day. So what does that tell you? If price goes down to 224, that's where you're gonna react. All right? So that's one confluence level. Let me help you guys. Let me show you guys find how to find another confluence level right now on the current market. So right here, this is where the current 
uh, price is. So by identifying it, you guys want to first look for resistant points, okay? Wherever it's rejecting. It's rejecting here. It's rejecting here. It's rejecting here. You see? These levels right here kind of tells you right away with just looking at it, right? From your eyes, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to draw a level somewhere right here. And then now, in order to find the confluence level, you're going to be looking for the most touches, okay? The most touches of any uh, candle, either up or down, as resistance or support. So... By drawing it here, you're going to look at right here. You see how it's touching here? This area right here seems to be touching the most right here. This one, this one, this touch right here, right? And then you come over here. You see it's touching right here, right? And then so that's where you want to draw that, this line right here. There you go. You see how it has the most touches? That's where you want your confluence level. And then right here, there's also another one. If you look at it, look, it's touching all these also. But you see right here? It's kind of respecting here, 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 and then around here. So that's your confluence level. Those are the two confluence levels right there. That's 100 point apart from each other. That's going to be a good area to make trades right there based off of where it, uh, how it reacts. It's underneath it or above it. So right there, that's the current levels. And then now you're going to look for another one. So based off of this right here, look, look. You see how when you have the crosshair here, you're gonna see a lot of touches, right? There's a touch here, there's a touch over here. Let's see, look, let me draw a few here. That's the touch, right? That's the touch right here. Look, see how it's right here? And then right here, all right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put a horizontal line right there and take a look. You see how price reacts to it? These are confluence levels. They're similar to supply, I'm sorry, uh, support and resistance levels. But these are levels where it's point of interest. Exactly the way you use a, a, a point of control from the volume profile. You want it to react there. And once it passes above, you, should, you do the longs. When it's below, you do the shorts. So based on this, take a look at how, how it is, right? It's right there. So right now I'm just drawing a couple more for you guys. And then we can take it down to the smaller time frame. So right here, this right here would be a pretty much a support, support level right here. So, but right here, there's not that much data. You're not gonna see a lot of reaction up and down. These ones you had more reactions up and down. But let me show you guys these resistance and support levels. Okay, it goes all the way back. If you were to go all the way back in time, look, they still make sense. So that's why sometimes when there's no levels where you're where the current price is at, you can always go back further back in time. So these are the levels. Look, they are, they've been reacting, you see? Right here. Come up here, reject, you see? That's a hard rejection before it came back up. And that, that may look small, but this is a two, two uh, four hour candle. So look at how big, it's a, was it 408 here? The wick went to about 230, you see? That's about 170 points. You know, 170 points is huge. So these candles look small, but they're actually pretty big. And then if you look at these points right here, you see 44, all these, look, they're just, they're still reacting to this day, all the way from back in February. You see, all these levels, all respected. They're just all points of interest where price of buyers and sellers will react. And then now look, let's go back to maybe, let's go back to the week and see how, how these levels are reacted, okay? And if you can see here, this is, April, this is October. Let's see, let's do the series. Bars. Okay. Do the series here, bars. Okay, I don't know why it's not. Bars. Okay, there we go. All right, so each one of these bars is one week, okay, guys? So this is going to get us way back in time here. So if you look at it here, let's see where the levels are. It doesn't go back that far. But this right here is 2022. October 2022. If you look at these levels, they're pretty well respected. So if you were to... Let's see. 
four four. Yeah, so this is on the weekly, as you can see right here. Look at the reaction. You see? Look at that reaction. So Kung Fu's level are pretty simple. There's not much to it, you know. That's why this was gonna be a quick little video. But look at that reaction right there, guys. You know, it's it's a pretty simple concept. Just wanted to get you guys on the same page, so you know, you guys can draw these levels easily. Pretty much, you just draw the levels and the lines right through it. The most touches is where you want it. That's just the point of interest. Okay. All right, so right now, that's pretty much how you draw it. I'm just gonna bring it down to the smaller time frame now. Show you guys how it looks when you're actually trying to trade it. Let's go down to the five minute, okay? Because this is the level we try to trade. Um, I don't think this is a five minute yet, is it? Five minute, yes it is. Okay, so since we don't have that much confluence here, let's draw some a couple of them on the one hour. So that you guys can see how they react. I like to keep my 2,500 bars. That's a good tip for you guys. You guys don't. Sometimes you guys are short on data. There's not enough candles. That's how you guys do it. Okay. So, based off the one hour here, there's not that much levels here. This one right here, but that's more of a support. So pretty much this level right here, 15144, that's a level that we had from the confluence that we drew. And you can see right here, it looks perfect. You see, it looks perfect, perfect. You see the reactions? Perfect, you see? This is how I get these levels and you guys are so, uh, you guys always ask me how, how is it so accurate? Look, I, I just drew it for you guys right there in front of you guys. And it's simple as that, man. It's not that, it's not that, um, it's not as complicated as you guys think. Look. See that 144? Take a look on the five minute. It reacts to it pretty good, right? Look at this. Look at this. This one kind of baked out down here a little bit, but with the moment it came back up, you enter long. You trade it upwards. You see? And that's why when I name it, I name it confluence. You know, just so that I know it's a confluence level, not just a support resistance or, you know, whatnot. See, that's how I name it. So when you guys see my levels on the chart when I'm trading live, and it says confluence. That's how you guys know those are the levels. You know, I try to mark these up for you guys so that you guys can have a good idea of it. Um, but look, if let's just say right here we're trying to trade. What time is this? This is. Trying to look at the time here. Okay, this is the hourly. Okay, we're looking at the hourly right now. Okay, now let's bring it down to the five minutes. Let's see how it looks, right? So this is pretty much right there, one of the areas where I circle those confluence levels. Look guys, even down to the five minute, it's pretty perfect. You see? You see, look at this. Down to the five minute. You could totally trade this on the five minute, right? If you were to, let's say, draw a Fibonacci now, let's say we put input in Fibonacci here, okay? All right, we do here. This one doesn't make sense. Why is that? Because of the time right now. Yeah, we ran out of time, so we never made it up there. We lost volume. But let's find a good example here. Okay, like this. This is a good example. We draw a Fibonacci from here up to the high of day here. Right here. This is the London session. And look, guys. You see Fibonacci. Mix it up with the Fibonacci. You know this is where the confluence level of the bounce. You take the, the longs upwards. How far do you take it up? To the Fibonacci level. You can try to push it up to here if you want. But if it doesn't work out and price falls back down, cut it right here then you're secured. The profit would have been good. All right? That's how you guys mix up, mix the combination of different uh, strategies. So that's one way of trading confluence, right? Now we move to the next one. The same level has been respected though, 14114. Look, let's just say, let's just say we were over here now, okay? Once we're over here, we draw a Fibonacci from this right here. This, this is where the market opened, guys, around... This is when news came out right here. So the market opened right around here on this candle. Okay, that's where the market opened. So a way to mix up with the confluence of this level right here is you would draw a Fibonacci from, because the trend is going up, as you guys can see here, slowly going up, you would draw a trend line. I mean, sorry, you would draw a Fibonacci from this high candle 
down to this low candle, right? And then now you wait for market to open. Market opens right here on this candle. Take a look. Boom. Bounce here, 38%. Once it recovers back up, you enter start position. Uh, start position. Once it goes past the uh, the 50%, you start your full position. Yeah, you add in your full position. Take it up to the look at the level. You take it up to this level. Trim some here. Final target. That's your golden Fibonacci right there. You see these levels are all drawn right now just for you. So this is where price was was at right here currently. We drew the Fibonacci from this point to this low here because that's the pre-market levels. And you see, because of that, we were able to get a Fibonacci of how price was going to react. And price was going to react here. We shoot it up. We take it up here. This is the market open play, guys. So, uh, market open plays are very aggressive, so they react to 38% very well. Most of the time, that's the strategy that I use at the open bell. I draw the pre-market levels on the high and the low using Fibonacci, and that's how. That's why you always see me using Fibonacci at the open. I will always tell you guys about that 38%. We're going to wait for that reaction. And then once we see it coming back the other way and reclaiming the price, that's when we take the trade. And the golden Fibonacci's, this is the 161% right here that I tell you guys to uh, to mark as the gold level. Because look, perfect, right? Perfect collection right there. Now, once you see price going back down, this is where you want it to drop below, right? You don't want to take trades right here. You can for an early entry if you want, but <clears throat> ideally... I, I don't really do that. That's why most of the time you gotta most of the time guys you guys see me You guys won't see me catch the top or the bottom. I don't do that anymore I used to do that, but you know that leads to a lot of clappage So now I wait for confirmation, right? It has to break the trend. It has to break that formation All right, so in order for it to break formation it has to go below this level because that's my previous level Sometimes if price is going like this like this like this like this then I would take I would take the shorts from near top because look it's making a lower high each time It's not able to reclaim the, those highs then when price is consolidating and making that formation, then as price goes up, I'll probably take a start position right here or right here. So yeah, that's how I trade. You guys will see me do that all the time. I don't do anything special. I don't do anything new. I stick to the same strategy. Okay. So in so depending on scenario, right? I would like to take an entry here for a confirmed entry. And if it's doing this whole movement, then I'll take the start position up here. And then once price shoots down here, like this. I'll enter full position and take it down. And then where would I take it down? I'll take it down to the purple line because this is where we were drawing. This is where we were entering. I'll take it down right here. I would sell my position right there. But because there's a BWAP here, I'll sell some positions here. And this goes back to the same things I've been uh, preaching is that less indicator is better just because you see, because there's a BWAP here, it makes me collect early. If I didn't have a VWAP here, I would follow this only. So that kind of shows you the negative effects of having, uh, you know, too many indicators on your screen and things like that. Any lines that you guys will see on your screen will make you uh, doubt your, your trades if it has a reaction there, right? See right here? It has a reaction here. So it did, did shoot up. But without this line here, the only thing you're going to see is your levels of of the Fibonacci. Yeah. Um, so that's how you would take that trade, right? Based off the confluence and Fibonacci. So now, but here's the where's that where's that confluence level right here? Okay. Let's take a look. You see? Look from that level down to here. If we just waited, take a look. Price eventually hit from that level to that level. You see? But most people can't hold that trade because it does get a little it does get a little difficult, right? If you were to draw a trend line, you see it did break here, we would probably take it somewhere around here already if it closed up. Because that trend is broken. So that's one way right there to look at confluence. Let's see if we can find another example. You see this confluence is constantly being oh here. Yeah, let's go back to this. Confluence, this level is again being respected, right? You see it here? So now, take it up. Once it shows uh, some sort of support here, you continue using it as support. And then, based off of the fact that this is now going on a downtrend here, based on the fact that it's going on a downtrend, you're going to draw a new fit, 
right? That that fifth earlier already got broken. So now this fib right here, you would draw it right here because it formed a pivot. The moment it started forming a pivot, right around here on this candle, let's just say right here, this is how it looks, right? The moment it formed like this, this is when you can start drawing a, a, uh, a new fib. So you draw the fib from the bottom point to the top because it's on its way down, it's moving down, the trend is now down, right? This is a trend. So you would draw from here up to the high point here. And now where is price gonna retrace to, right? We're gonna assume that it's gonna retrace to the Fibonacci levels. Look at it go. Volume died down, so it never got there. You see, the market closed, so it never got up to that point. Now let's see if we move forward. Okay, we're back at the confluence level on the next day. Now this is the next day, right? Here we go. 6:30 opens up right here. It's, it opened up below the confluence level. Right, so now we're gonna aim for shorts. This is pre-market though. Market open right here, and look, this is also the second. This is another confluence right here. I didn't mark it. I didn't write it as confluence. All these white lines right now are all confluence levels that I drew with you guys. So as it approaches this price point, the moment it held up, we're gonna target the next level, level to level. Okay, that's all it is, level to level. You see, and look, look how many confluence we have here. Confluence are reasons. Okay, we have VWAP. 50 SMA, 50 SMA is that red one. I don't really use it, but on this chart it has it. So, um, so VWAP is there, confluence level is there. That's gonna tell you that's a huge area of resistance, right? And on top of it, VWAP is all pointing downwards. You see the trend is kind of moving downwards. Um, so it's safe to assume that you know that's a very good level to take your profit. But seeing this right here, this is how you would trade it, right? The moment it shows support, you would trade that. 060 to 138 guys that's that's 70 points somewhere around there more than 70 points you see that's a huge amount of profit but you see what i mean by like the conviction this is how you guys see me code for these crazy bangers these crazy you know two three hundred ticks because take a look i have nothing else in my chart there's nothing right there it's from here to here what's stopping it right there's nothing stopping us from going from here to here but if you guys were to have other indicators and things like that you guys are gonna be seeing like lines here lines here look how are you guys gonna hold anything you guys will be collecting here you guys will be collecting here by the time you guys get here you guys have any, barely anything left so goes back to again too much indicators will make you not have conviction they'll only give you that short term gains so i wouldn't have these and then this is how I would trade. I would trade it like that, and then collect most of it right there, right? So confluence again, and then now here we go again. We go back to this confluence. Now this area should be resistance, okay? So this will take you out a couple times right here. Take you out a couple times to see if price did close. So price would close above, but because the trend is going down, you would not be trading this trade, even if it held. It needs to hold stronger, right? Um, as you can see here these volume and over here i'm trying to look at volume so it did consolidate there so that would be a lot of clappage right there okay if we were in a trade that day we would get hit right there most likely on a loss because of the fake out right so it did fake people out but because the trend as you can see all trend lines are moving downwards right all amas are moving downwards you would not be trading that uh if you guys are on my live you guys will see that I try to tell you guys not to trade against the trend, okay? That's something I used to do myself. I don't do that anymore. I don't trade against the trend anymore. I would wait for it to come back down below this VWAP right here, come back up, retest. As you can see on this candle, it did do that. You see, retest. I would show you guys these kind of arrows right here. This is how I would want to trade it. And then I would do it like this, or even a lower leg. Because you want to see lower, lower lows each time, you see? Lower lows, lower lows, lower lows, lower lows. Lower lows. Right, so if it comes back up and comes back down, you want to see another lower low, which is here. And then, now, once price goes like this, I would obviously take TP here. Once I take TP here, my stop loss would be the close above 060, which is above this line, right? The confluence level. Once price closes above, as this candle did, I would exit. And that's it. It's all my runners. This trade would be complete. A success. Now, coming down here, 
we are on this trade right here. For example, we can draw a Fibonacci right here as it's pivoting up, right? We do this. So we draw this through here. This is a five minute fib, so it's a lower time frame fib. And as you can see, it reacts right there. 38%, that's how it's gonna give me conviction. 38% is lined up with VWAP. Very strong level, multiple confluence. Right here is where we're shorting. Back to the confluence level. That is what, 120, our entry based on the rejection, we would probably catch it around 110. 110 down to 060. Guys, that is 50 points, guys. That's 200 ticks right there. They can collect right there. You see, all these move, they look small, but they're huge, you know? They're all 200 tickers, 100 tickers, 200. I don't I actually been, it's all been 200 tickers, 300 tickers. So see these small moves right here? They don't look impressive, but they're 200 ticks. You know, look at that from there to there, right? Are you guys following? Can I get a confirmation on, uh, you know, if that makes sense to you guys? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys see this, right? Just from level to level here, that's 200 ticks that you guys would have caught. If you guys trade this trade and look how good this trade looks right the reaction right here the reaction right here down to here just from one level to the next like but you know i'm telling you guys if you guys have too many indicators you guys will not see this if you guys have uh different um indicators that give you guys all these lines all these you know lines here lines here all that crap you will not be able to trade these trade comfortably but if you guys see how i just drew the fib right Look, look at it. That's all you see is those levels from this low right here. Draw it to the top of that right there, that wick. And there you go. 30%. You know? So this is how you guys would see it on right here. Question, though. Yeah, go for it. So do we only uh, draw the conference level on uh, four hours something? No, you can draw it on the four hour, the two hours. So I, I go from four hour, two hour, one hour. And then that's it. Because, you know, anything below one hour is not that strong. And I don't want to use those. Those levels are pretty much only there if I... I only draw the, like, a 15-minute to the 5-minute if I can't find the one-hour levels. Because sometimes one hour, uh, they're not defined until you go down the time frame. Um, but, but yeah, no problem. Um, so right here, right? That, that would have been a really good play. Right there, if you guys can see. We started right here, right? Reacts right here. So you guys see how I wouldn't even take this trade up. I wouldn't. I would personally wait. Because the thing is, the moment I, I can see it, right? I can see the pivot, it's already right here. We already missed a big amount of the trade rate. So guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna wait till, since I know retracement is around here, I'm just gonna wait for it to retrace up to here, right? Once it retraces up to there, the moment I see a reaction on this candle, um, so do those levels, so do those levels. Yeah, you wanna do it at the four hour. So you wanna start your day off at the four hour, two hour, one hour, and then those are your levels. They should have, you should have enough good amount of levels. And sometimes what happens guys, if you guys are not used to holding for these big moves and these uh, bold moves, these one hour levels are gonna be really far apart for you. And it's gonna be uncomfortable for you because you don't, you're not used to holding that far out, right? Or you're not used to uh, waiting and having patience for those levels to actually hit. But I can assure you guys, if you guys have patience, these levels will hit. If you're patient enough, wait for these levels and they will react to it. That's where your A plus setups are at. Not any of these trashy plays in here. Like, you know, anything like, you know, throughout the day, you're gonna see it sit around trashy areas. And a lot of people take trades during those times. Those are called, I call it degen areas. And that's where you degen if you're trading in those areas. And a lot of people still do it, even when I tell them that. I'll, I'll even circle it and I'll, I'll even like do this, you know? I'll even make it red, do not trade in that area. Like, you know, like let's say like, like even like this area right here, see? But guess what people do? They still make trades. <laughs> they will still open trades because they cannot stand it. They cannot, they just cannot, like, they cannot stand not making a trade, guys. <laughs> um, can you, can you put that in your trading day? <laughs> What's that? Do not trade. Can you put that in? I just yeah, I can, I can write it. I can write it, you know, look, I mean, I, I forgot how to do it. I think, I, I think that would, maybe, maybe that would help, you know, some of the members, <laughs> I mean, you know? I guess I will. I'm I will serious, bro. <laughs> do, not <laughs> should probably help me. you know probably help like, me too <laughs> like honestly i mean you know let me try right now i i figured red is enough no do over here do not trade <laughs> do 
you know? Like, yeah, yeah, I don't know how to use this. It doesn't move when we're reading. But yeah, see, I can write like that, you know? Maybe make it so ugly that people can't even read the price action. Uh, Just try that next time. Yeah, I'll try that next time. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so you know, a lot of can a lot of times the members, I can hear them. They don't know that we can hear them, <laughs> and it's saying order field, order field, order field. And there's so many orders getting executed in this area, and they forget to mute their mic or something. You know? I know, right? <laughs> there's been times I know a couple members that do this, and I confront them, I hear that too, like, <laughs> and then they would say, "No, it's not me." But you look at them; they're the only one. They're the only one that is not muted. <laughs> That's the funny oh, part. <laughs> We were all, uh, you know, we were all, we were all saying, yeah, it's you, you're the only one that's not muted. <laughs> that's so funny. It's hilarious. But yeah, you know, because nobody wants to be called, called a degen, obviously, but this is what it is. When you're trading in an area where you shouldn't be, there's no A plus setup. Why are you taking trades there, right? There shouldn't be, you know, a reason why people are taking trades. Yeah. Well, right now, I don't know what you guys are doing. I don't know the charts right now, but yeah. So uh, anyways, back to what we were saying is right here, this is the best setup right here, right? Is it for the shorts? The trend is going down, so we don't want to fight the trend, right? Going with the trend is already one confluence, automatically one confluence. That's a good start, already, right? So now once it goes up here, price is starting to reject right here, right? This is where you would take your starter position. The moment it goes past here, this is where you would take your full position. When it reclaims below 50%, uh, that means that's a confirmation on your shorts. And then you would enter full position, and you enter full position, you target the confluence level, right? And then look, right here, see this is basic, we're teaching in hindsight right now by the way guys, this is what most people do, <laughs> but if you guys are on the live with me, with the group mentorship, we're getting this price action reading live as price is moving. So you would be seeing kind of like this, this is kind of like, you know, you kind of like move it like this, this is how you kind of see price. And look, let's say we hit right here, we hit right here, the confluence level, right? This is the low, if we made a lower low here. And as we get here, we are now failing to make a lower low, right? So what is this, guys? Head and shoulders. Head and shoulders, guys. Inverse head and shoulders, I mean. You see? Inverse head and shoulders. Where are we targeting? 38%. You know? You see? Here's the big, here's the neckline, though. The neckline or the baseline of the head and shoulders is this area right here. Is this line. The next confluence. That's the neckline. You see? Right here, confluence. And look where it goes, guys. Very close to it, you see? Very close to it, right? But you would target 38%, because that's your level that you have on your screen. You know? I personally would always take it at 38%. I always try to push it a little bit, but I always regret it, almost. But when I do push it past 38%, I'm usually in like maybe 10% of my contracts, or like 20% maximum. I already remove like most of my position. If I have four contracts, I remove all three already. I only keep one running. Okay. After the 38%, guys, you guys are now just squeezing everything out for, you know, squeezing all the juice out pretty much. So if you go over here, right, now let's say if it reacts and rejects, we are technically still on a downtrend. You see? A downtrend. All right. We would be downtrending. So right here, reaction, boom. But you see, look, we can take a short here, right? Obviously, if we take a short, we would try to aim for here. But if you can see here, look how many levels there are. Look how many things that's going on here. There's a VWAP right here. See, we are, we're currently at this stage, if we were to look at it like this, right? Look, for here, we would aim downwards, right? But because we're up the, above VWAP, I would not take that short. The only time I would take that short is if it goes below this level right here. So let's say we would break this structure. We would break this down here. But usually when a, an aggressive break like this, I wouldn't take it, okay? I would not take this. Because I, what I wanted to do is I wanted to come back up, retest this level. This would be a break of structure right here. Break of structure, come back down, break and retest. Retest upwards, this is where I would take the, the trade, okay? If it shows weakness, all right? Let's see if it shows weakness. So it did show right here. So the moment it closes below VWAP, I would take it. But look how far it only went down. 580, I would take it somewhere around here. That's about a hundred tick. See? It looks like that, but it's a hundred tick. <laughs> um, but as you can see here, what time is this? Yeah, this is near closing time. I wouldn't even be trading this area. This is closing time, as you can see here. Power hour and then the last minute, you know. So pretty much um, 
that's pretty much it for combo. There's not much. I don't know how this combo became a mixture of uh, Fibonacci and strategy, but it became it. another video. But you guys see here, recognizing these uh these patterns right here is lower. This is a it made a low. Next leg made a lower low, and then up again. When it rejected, it came back down, but it was it failed to make a lower low. That is an inverse head and shoulder right here. Inverse head and shoulder. Shoulder, head, shoulder. So sometimes when you recognize these uh, pattern quickly, you can form an analysis to trade it, right? So now if it, but right here, I would, I would be, um, my analysis would be, if it keeps on going up here, it will probably try to shoot up for the, the neck, the neckline of the head and shoulders, which is here. And that's the confluence. That's where I would target. But because it's a 38% here, I would trim most of my position. And then you see, the trade would work out. I think we did catch this trade actually. I remember. Yeah, we took this trade up. Yes. Actually, no, we didn't. That's that time frame I don't trade. We took this trade up with it. Yeah. Yeah, we took this one up. Yeah. Um. See, you have been trading. Pretty much that's it. So now, if you guys want to do, is you guys want to get on with the trading, we can, we can get to that. We'll do that. We're gonna go to the London session, start London early, see how it goes. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. Yeah, so that pretty much concludes Confluence, guys. Confluence is not that hard, it's pretty simple. Just look for a uh, point of control, point of interest, where price meets from when it rejects and when it shows support. When you can combine those two levels together, where both points touches, that is confluence level. And if you guys can, let me just draw you a couple one real quick right here. Just to give you an example of a smaller time frame confluence on a five minute. Okay, look right off the bat, you can see some already. Right here, you see, right here. Look, you, you, all you have to do is just put your crosshair across it, guys. You can see right here, right here. Look, right here, one, two, three, right? Let you draw a line right here, take a look. It's touching, see? It's touching for the upside and the downside. That's what you want as confluence. You see, right here. It's touching right here. Do a little couple fakes out here. You see, right here, you see? And then right here, you see? So, you see, that's the five minute confluence. As you can see, price reacts to it, right? Up and down. That's how you draw the line. And that's the reason why some of you guys ask me, how come you, they can't, you guys can't find the con that, those levels? How come you guys, um, how did I find that, right? Because it doesn't make sense when you're looking for it. When you're looking for it, most of the time you're looking for support or resistance. And a confluence is both. It's both support and resistance. In a sense, it's kind of like supply term demand, demand term supply, support term resistance. But yeah, it's a point of interest. You see, it goes right through the price. In a way, it's like VWAP, right? In VWAP, it gets rejected, but once price is below VWAP, you enter shorts. Above, you enter longs. Right? In a way, like VWAP. But you see how VWAP is not super accurate sometimes. No. And that's pretty much it, guys. But you see how the five minute confluence? You see how I draw five minutes? There's nothing in this area. See the five minutes only intraday. So that's why you guys gotta know how to draw your lines and make sure you guys draw correctly to a different color or a different thickness or something. So you guys know what level belongs to what time frame. Usually my, my high time frame is both, it's a little bigger. And my smaller intraday lines that's not as important are um you know, our, our little small skinny ones. All right, everybody, we're going to wrap it up here. Come join us in Traders Reborn Discord, currently free for a limited time right now. Link below or in my bio. We educate and help members break bad habits, pass their evaluation for the pop firms, and become self-sufficient traders. Hope you all found value in this video. And if you did, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe for more content. Comment below on what you'd like me to talk about more about. Feedback would be great. Traders Reborn, let's go.